Hello and welcome to the 72's YouTube channel where today we're talking about the best signings in the championship this season. And just a reminder, if you haven't already, subscribed to the channel and follow us on Twitter as well. At underscore the 72 for the best EFL content and a lot of funny videos like this one. Somebody won't tell me the world is going to roll me. Just uh, any excuse to play that video, to be honest. So let's get into the show today. Best signings in the championship this season. Uh, we've picked three each, uh, going in order three, two, through to one. Uh, do you want to get things kicked off? Yeah, yeah. So number three for me is uh, Victor Gibbekez from um, Coventry. Ten goals, three assists. Coventry's only scored 35 goals this season. So he's, you know, he's got a massive, he's played a massive impact in that. And I just think even this season for Coventry, their main aim was always going to be survival. Um, and the early season form that they had, they ha they just completely blew those expectations out of the water because they were sitting like third or fourth, like 10 games into the season. And funny enough, nine of Gilkes' 10 goals has came in the first 10 games of the season. Uh, sorry, the first 11 games of the season. He got nine goals, two assists in his first 11. So his goal involvement alone just like completely set the bar a lot higher than what they were expecting. And I know they've kind of drifted off away now, um, Coventry, but, you know, if they win their games in hand, they're still, they're still around sixth and seventh. But I think more importantly, that early season form, just similar to Redden last season, um, just came out of the blocks so quick and it kind of took the pressure off Mark Robbins kind of because they were no longer in a relegation fight and the commentary fans early on in the season were like debating amongst themselves because some were saying look we only expected um, to stay up like we're all uh, achieving whereas other commentary fans were saying I know but we're in this position now we want to get the playoffs kind of thing and I think that's all down to Giracez's goal involvement and also, you know, Callum, Callum O'Hare has been superb for them as well. But I just think mainly, considering he was on loan at them last season from Brighton, got made a permanent this season. And like I say, I think he's he's very much deserving to be get the bronze medal for um, the third best sign in the Championship this season. Yeah, I can't argue with that. He's been quality. Um, I was looking over his stats the other day on flash scores and um, he, he scored so many goals at the start of the season, got Coventry yeah. right up table and then he got called into the Sweden squad didn't he and I think then he's mm -hmm. only scored maybe one goal yeah he so, replaced Ibrahimovic but, didn't he yeah yeah it was um um it's been a great season for him as well still a young player as well so um on to my third I've gone for Josh Bowler at Blackpool now uh used to be at QPR went to Everton without making his championship debut for, Q, uh, for QPR I believe and it didn't work out for him at Everton. Everton, he's now 24 years old and he's really coming into his own this season. Uh, 24, I think he's 22, sorry. But um, he's, he's been quality for Blackpool this season, I think. Josh Bowler is one of those players who in 10 years' time, you know, will be tweeting about him saying the streets won't forget this guy because <laughs> he's got that kind of that that kind of ball-playing ability that he just can't help from watch. You know, he he's not afraid to take on players and... If, if there's one criti criticism of him this season, it's that he's not got that much of an end product. I think he's got one goal, three assists, and maybe 24 championship appearances this season. So, uh, but, but that's in the Blackpool side that doesn't score too many goals. But I think Josh Bowler, um, they got him on a free one year contract option for another year. I think he's been a quality. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Don't worry about it. Just keep that in. <laughs> Keep it and it'll make the edit. Um, where was I? Uh, Josh Bowler, yeah, quality signing. And if uh, he leaves Blackpool at the end of the season when his deal runs out, um, he'll, he'll have no trouble finding another championship club. Nottingham Forest have um, been really pushing for him this month, and I think Fulham have been linked as well. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's been he's been quality, like you say. Most progressive runs has been so important for Blackpool, just getting them up the pitch. Um, number two for me is Morgan Gibbs White. I just think. Sheffield United have just been like <sighs> craving someone who is just good. Like they have because they've got midfielders like Sander Birds. I mean, there's a lad um, 
I know who is a Sheffield United fan. He absolutely despises Sander Burge. And I feel as if he, well, he's kind of been made to play because of how much they spent on him and like the myth around him that he's he's a Champions League type player playing in a poor Sheffield United side. But I think since um and I and um Gibbs White's came into the side, they've just been so much better. And um especially Gibbs White. Like I say, he was in my championship training season um that we've done a couple of weeks ago. He was fantastic at Swansea. He went back to Wolves. I don't know why Wolves let him go again. He's a Premier League footballer playing in the Championship. And this season, he's got um, 16 games. He's played five goals, four assists. His records when he's played for Sheffield United is they've won, they've won half the game. So, you know, he's got a 50% win record when he's playing for Sheffield United compared to when he's not playing there. They've won two, they've, they've won two out of nine. Like, he is a, he is the difference maker, and he can play centre mid. He's been playing on the right for Sheffield United like this season. He's just class. He's a different act, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing him play regularly in the Premier League next season. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, he's a quality player, isn't he? And he's playing in a Sheffield United side. They're so frustrating to watch because they're they're obviously a great team. They've got some great players like Sander Berg, who um, is probably he probably sums up the frustration at the club at the moment, but. I'd, I'd love to see Sheffield United doing well. I literally live across the road from Bramall Lane. So when it's bouncing there, it's bouncing. But um, my number two best signing in the championship, I've gone for Jimmy Dunn at QPR, signed from Burnley in the summer. Um, Swansea were really pushing for him, but he ended up at QPR pretty last minute, uh, moved to QPR, and he's been, he's been quality. He um, he won starting every game at the start of the season, but when Geordie Device picked up an injury, um, earlier on, he's come into the side since then. And I did a little bit of research before. And, uh, Jimmy Dunn has now started every championship match since the middle of September and he's finished all but um, maybe one or two of them. And um, if you look at what QPR fans are saying about him, they absolutely love him because <clears throat> they're such a passionate um, set of supporters. You know, you go to Loftus Road and the stands are all com confined right close to the pitch. And they love those players, those defenders that just kind of show so much passion for the game and for the club. Um, you think about people like Clint Hill, who's an absolute favourite at QPR. I think Jimmy Dunn, he's got that kind of rawness about his game. He's got that passion. He's got that leadership. And um, he slotted into what I think is the best back three in the championship. You know, Warburton plays a back five, two wing backs and then three centre backs. Johan Barbie on the left, Jimmy Dunn in the middle, Rob Dickey on the right. I don't think there's a better back three in the championship than that. And I think Dunn, um, he's really proved himself to be one of the best players in the championship this season, 24 years old. So he's got a few years before he reaches his prime. And if QPR can keep hold of him um, for a few seasons longer, I think he signed a three-year deal in the summer then. Um, I honestly think they'll be looking at a future Premier League defender in Jimmy Dunn. Yeah, we had him on loan at Sunderland a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. It might have been our first season in the league one, actually. I think it was. We got him on loan from Burnley. Um, he, was all, he was all right. He was all right. Like, I feel as if he's obviously grew a lot since then. Um, he was only a, a very young lad when he came to us, but no, he's like, yeah, you see, he's been class this year for QPR. And um, so that's your number two. My number one, I think it's picks itself to be fair. I'm, I'm guessing you wanted to, to have him as well, but yeah. because I got there yeah, first, um, Harry Wilson, obviously a full, he cost 10 million pounds. so you get in a player that is 10 million, like he is a 10 million pound player and you put him in the championship and he's just, it's a playground for him. Um, eight goals, 10 assists in 23 games. But it's not just that, it's just everything he brings. Like he set pieces, just seeing Harry Wilton on the opposition team sheets can put you off as a defender. He's just, he's a class act. He showed it at Bournemouth, um, again in the Premier League and the top of the league, the fly in. And I think it's, Marto Selva's been brilliant, but I think you look at that team, it's just, it's a joke. Like, Mitrovic, Wilson, like, in the same side. If Mitrovic, um, obviously, Mitrovic doesn't score, then you look at Cavalio and Wilson, and Wilson's just been superb. I think he's got to be, he's got to, he's got to be gold. He's got to be number one, best sign in this uh, championship season. They've paid the money for him, but they're getting the rewards for it. Yeah. I mean, um, Harry Wilson would have been my number one choice. Um, but we wanted to keep it different, didn't we? We wanted six players in this uh, 
video. So I've gone for as my number one sign in this season, uh, although it's a loan sign and it's up there with Harry Wilson in terms of the best sign and uh, Jed Spence, Nottingham Forest now. He, he's just quality. And I was looking at Nottingham Forest's um, team last season and I think even though they were shocking last season, they had, they had a strong spine in the side. You know, you look at players like Scott McKenna and Joe Worrell at the back, James Garner in midfield, and then Lewis Grabham up front, who um, who's done quality this season. But Jed Spence coming in on the right-hand side of that spine, which is still the same, he's, he's just linked the whole thing together. Like You watch when Liverpool play, and pretty much everything comes through Trent Alexander-Arnold. The, the same kind of thing can be said for Forrest and Jed Spence, you know. He'll pick up the ball deep in his own half. He'll take it forward. He'll link up with Brennan Johnson um, on the right-hand side. And I, I just think he's quality. I think Middlesbrough have really... I, I, I don't know if they've missed a trick loaning him out this season because he'd, he'd obviously uh, walk straight into their team. But Chris Wilder... Um, wanted Wait, to say it's, it's the old debate at the moment, though, because I put a tweet on saying, Asai Jones or Jed Spence is the new Ronaldo on the team. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm team Jones. I think Jones is a better player than Spence. But like you oh, say, yeah. I think you have missed a trick in... Surely there's a formation that can get them both in. Whether it's Jed Spence on the left and Asai Jones on the right, or whether they go th- whether it's a 3-4-3 with Jones further forward and Spence just behind them. There's there's definitely work there's definitely room to be uh, to work with there, like hundred percent. Definitely, definitely. And if um if for whatever reason I can't imagine Wada um wouldn't not want Spence in his team going into next season, then they've got a player. Mm-hmm. Who with one year left on his contract, um, come the summertime, he's <clears throat> he's been linked with some of the biggest uh, clubs in the Premier League. Arsenal, so. in it. Arsenal, Spurs. Um, I think Leeds have probably been linked as well because they're linked to you know any Talk player who plays well in the Championship. But um, he's quality. He's my number one signing of the season. So uh, that concludes another video. Um, any special mentions? Anything? Any players we've missed out? Put me on the spot there. Uh, Levi, Colville. Le- Levi Colville at Huddersfield. I think he could be unlucky to get in. Um, there's, there's been there's been a few, there's been a few good players. But what what we'll do is we'll um, we'll make a little image of that and we'll put it on Twitter and you guys can vote for us. Uh, who's got the best the best top three? I'm currently one 0 up from the team this season. We need to put the top three managers on there to to have a voting session on that, and then we'll get this one up. See who's uh, see who's leading after this one. Yeah, we'll we'll do that, and then I'll pull it back to one one, and then uh, we'll see who gets the injury time winner on the next video. So, um, as ever, if you've liked the video, subscribe, like, leave your thoughts in the comments, and join us next time for another video on the Seventy Two's YouTube channel. <laughs>